When things in life don't turn out just as we'd hoped or expected, in anything from minor to catastrophically huge ways, we sometimes feel short-changed. This is not how things are meant to be. But adapting to or accepting unsatisfactory circumstances can take time. It may even prove impossible. When physical ill health is involved, feeling even vaguely to blame may actually hamper recovery. Now the ancients persistently thought that wrongdoing caused many an illness or disability, so they felt that forgiveness must be an integral part of healing. Jesus began his public ministry by inexplicably curing many very sick individuals. There had, of course, been extraordinary faith healers in those parts before, but Jesus was more complicated. He looked below the surface to potential root causes and presumed to grant forgiveness. Doing that was something exclusively reserved for God, usually with priests as his middlemen. His scrupulously religious contemporaries started to feel needled almost at once. Private individuals, even unofficial holy men, have no business doing such a thing as this. And if their God was to permit such an outrage, wouldn't his devoted servants be the ones most let down? How then would they respond? They hadn't always been paralysed, you know. They were fit as a flea before. We were like brothers. Double trouble, they called us. We looked alike, apart from his red hair. I saw Matty got his nickname, Rufus. Roman's name for Ginger. Inseparable we were. Until the day I dared him to walk along his roof terrace wall. And the idiot did, and the idiot fell. We were just bits of lads, but even then, from how we landed, I knew it were bad. I ran down, but I couldn't wake him. I thought he were dead, but when he came to, he couldn't move or feel out. It were my fault. Rufus' whole life ruined because of me. What kind of a friend? His mum and dad were distraught, sent us packing. Rufus lived, but his family had to do everything for him. I tried to see him once. His mum screamed at us, told me never to go near him again. So I didn't. Instead, I learned the building trade from me da. As I got bigger, I got stronger and handier. I could shift a ton of materials, knock down walls and relay roof terraces in no time. But one day, as I was taking a shortcut home through town, I saw Rufus laid on a mat, bottom of the market steps, be a begging bowl and a sign asking for donations. I'd heard his mum had died, but I was shocked, embarrassed, guilty. So I pretended I'd not seen him, but I couldn't get it out of my head. It was Rufus, Ginger, me old mate, helpless, friendless, hopeless. Ah, I saw him a few times after that, but still I didn't go near him till something happened. The holy fella, Jesus, he came to town again. Last time he'd healed umpteen sick people. After work that day, my da said, Here man, take me tools, I'm off to see Jesus. People were running, and I saw Matty, hi, Rufus, practically getting trampled. I had an idea. I rushed straight over to him. Come on man, let's go and see Jesus. Rufus looked startled. No, no, Garoff, leave us alone. He wouldn't even look at us. But maybe you can fix your legs. Come on. Why, I couldn't carry him by myself, so I nobbled a couple of friends as were passing. 
so we picked them up and lugged them, still protesting, following the stream of people. He, it were a big house, but not big enough. Massive crush around the door saw me da hanging around outside. What are you doing, man? He asked, looking surprised. I brought Ruth to see Jesus, but it were useless. We put him down on his mat, his eyes were full of tears. Just take us back, man, will you? We're a letdown. Don't you want to get better, Ruth? Me da looked at us both like we're lads again. Ruth! Aye, that's it. There's Ruth from the back, lads. I'm not a builder for nothing. Can we fix it? Why, aye, we can. We struggled a bit, getting them up the steps. I was baffled at first. But we have Dar's tools, and he built that house, so he knew the exact spot. We had three bits of rope in the bag. <laughs> had to tie my head cloth to the mat's fourth corner. Rufus were proper agitated, but when he saw us happen at the roof terrace, hammer and tongs, he sort of laughed. There were shouts below. The roof material were weighing him down, so wonder nobody stopped us. But then they couldn't get out. <laughs> Ruth clung on for dear life. I said, don't worry, man. I'll not let you fall. Nor again. Headcloth was strong enough, but a bit short. So I had it hang down through the hole like. Jesus looked at Rufus. Didn't touch him. And up at me. Looking back down. He told him his sins were forgiven. I felt suddenly unburdened, like my mistakes, my own mistakes, were and all. I almost fell through. Downstairs, folks started arguing about what Jesus had said. Who did he think he was? So Jesus asked him, was it easier then to say, get up and walk? And then... Then he said exactly that to my friend, and he did. Got up, like the accident had never happened. Matty sort of grinned up at us. He shook Jesus' hand, picked up his mat, and as the crowd parted, he made his way outside. St Mark's key question was, who is this Jesus? Is he the son of man or of God himself? Most first-hand witnesses seem to see just a human being, flesh and blood, like they are themselves. But then who can explain the things he does and says? In all respects, Jesus is something they'd never expected. Might God be acting in a completely different way, escaping the mean and narrow boundaries his people have spent centuries establishing for him? No longer content to rest immobile and passive in his temple, God is also taking up his bed and walking. If this odd and Rather obscure person Jesus way out in the sticks keeps doing things only God can do, effecting impossible cures and expressly releasing people from their spiritual shackles. Where does that leave the scribes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, even the priests? After all they've done for God, surely Jesus is in danger of undermining their personal authority. Can they accept this? By comparison, the poor, paralysed man and his determined friends are so open to God's mysterious healing power, so sure that relief is possible, that Jesus will raise them up and not let them down.